بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله نبينا محمد النبي الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الحمد لله now the sound is working and I'm sorry for uh, the misunderstanding that happened in the beginning the, the sound is not working so uh, today إن شاء الله is the first day for the Quran online class uh, Unfortunately, on Thursday, I wasn't able uh, to announce how to register and how to get connected to me so we can, I can hear you and you can hear me through an app called Zoom. I was away and I was not for the physical Quran class on Thursday. So for today, inshallah, we have two students who are connected and they already know the instructions and how to uh, participate. Inshallah, the class is free. It's for everybody. You can be in Philadelphia or in America or anywhere else in the world, and you will be able to participate. Uh, to participate, send me a private message on my uh, page. When you open the page, there is a button that says, uh, send a message. Send me a message saying that I want to participate in the class. And then, inshallah, I'm going to give you the instructions, how to download the Zoom app and how to be connected to me through the Zoom. And then we can go over uh, your recitation and we work on it until we fix it uh, very importantly I want you please to share the video maybe you're not interested in participating in the class but if you share the video and someone else participates in the class you're going to get the reward and the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so please share the video so you could get some reward and to be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how the class is going to work it is a very simple and easy process and anybody can participate in the class provided that you already know how to read from the Mus'haf. So if you are someone who never, uh, who, who does not even know the alphabet of Arabic, does not know how to read, uh, you will not be able to participate in this class unfortunately. But what you can do, you can work on your own find any class online or find someone to teach you how to read once you know how to read you can join at any point this week next week after a month after two months whenever you're ready it is free you don't have to pay nothing okay so whenever you're ready you are able to read so that's the time inshallah you're ready to be a part of the class when you are a part of the class how the class is going to work we will assign a page. So this week, inshallah, we're going to do Surah Al-Fatiha in the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay? I will make everyone reads it. Right? And then I'm going to go over that with him or with her. Because anybody can participate, brothers or sisters. It doesn't matter. It's an online class. So anyone can participate. So if you make your mistakes, I'm going to be fixing that mistakes or, or the mistakes you are making. The same way in the physical class that you've been watching. Uh, and then... I'm going to share my screen with those who are connected to me um, in the Zoom app. Those who are on Facebook watching, they're not going to be able to see the screen. So whenever I'm commenting on something, talking about some Tajweed rules, so I'm going to be on, uh, on a Word document and they will be able through the Zoom app to see my screen and they can see what I'm working on. Whenever comment I'm making or something that I want them to see, they will be able to see it. And this way, inshallah, they can, they can take notes uh, and, 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 and understand uh, the rules of Tajweed. Okay, so that's how the class will work. And then at the end of the class, inshallah, I'm going to read the same page so everybody can pay attention. And everybody can uh, listen to the proper uh, way of reading the page. And this way, inshallah, you will benefit from the recitation. And very importantly, this is a very serious class. It is not for those who just want to try it and leave. No. If you become a part of the class, alhamdulillah. But if you miss two classes, you are out of the class. Except if you have an emergency or if you have an excuse. We know that sometimes uh, things out of nowhere pops up and you cannot attend it. So if you have an excuse, that's not a problem. Because I don't want to give my time for people that are not serious. The class is free. Okay, so I'm not going to give my time for someone who's not serious. I want you to be serious. Uh, reading the, uh, or taking notes and reading your notes before the next class because I'm going to be throwing questions and asking you. I want you, I want to see you progressing. I want to see you learning. I want to see you moving from one spot to another. I want to see you being better person in terms of recitation. I don't want you to be the same person attending the class, meaning that you're not benefiting. The class is for you to learn. 
you must learn. If you're not learning, so you just waste in your time. So it's going to be a very serious class. I'm going to be throwing questions. Uh, student A is reading. It can ask a question to another student who's not reading. So you have to stay attentively throughout the whole uh, you have to stay attentive throughout the whole uh, process of the class. You can say, I have finished my recitation, so it can be uh, connected, but I don't have to pay attention. No, you have to pay attention. If you're not paying attention, I'm asking you questions. I'm seeing you, uh, I'm seeing you not progressing, so I may have to tell you, I'm sorry. You're not learning or benefiting from the class, so I'm going to let someone else who take your spot so that person can learn and benefit because we don't want to waste our time. So it is very important. Um, to understand this, uh, what we do in here is not uh, t to make you memorize the Quran, because we have to know that in terms of dealing or uh, interacting or learning the Quran, we have two things to do. Uh, we have memorization. You can memorize the Quran without good tajweed, without um, good recitation. We have many, many people out there who do memorize the Quran, but their recitation is terrible when they read. Nomad, no gunna, no qalqala, nothing of ahkam al tajwi. They like reading, um, uh, let's say, a newspaper or reading in, in, in a book. It's the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the way that it should be read is different. It's not the same as any other book. You must apply the rules of the tajweed. Okay? So because of that, Hevel is something different, and fixing your tilawa is something different else, something different. So what we're going to be working on is to make you read properly. Whenever you open the mushaf, you are able to read the page properly. Then the process of the hev is something that you have to work on. I want to memorize the Quran. Okay, such online classes are going to make you learn the Quran, uh, memorize the Quran. You need to have a halaqa, your local masjid that provides hevel al Quran al kareem you go and sit with the shaykh and memorize, okay? And then uh, you can, uh, let's say you memorize in daily a half of a page as a new lesson for you. Let's say Surah Al-Baqarah, I started with a half of a page. I finished that. Next time I'm going to go to the next uh, half of that page. I'm done with that page. I'm going to go to the next page. But I'm not going to forget the pages that I've already memorized because I have to keep them with me all the time. Other than that, I'm going to forget them. So I'm doing new lesson, which is a half a page or maybe a page, depending on what you can do. And then memorizing and reviewing whatever I have finished before. Let's say I've already done with Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm going to Surah Al Imran now. Okay, I'm going to do the, the first page of Al Imran. That's my new lesson. That's what I'm working on. But Surah Al-Baqarah, don't forget it. You have to have a daily routine. Of muraja review. So daily, at least you should do five pages of the previous uh, surahs and adzad that you have already memorized. So daily, I'm doing five pages from Surah Al-Baqarah. Starting from that first page of Surah Al-Baqarah. I do the first five pages by heart. I'm done with them. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to the next five pages. I'm done with them. The next day, I'm going to go to the next five pages. This way, all the way until I reach where I'm at. So let's say in the muraja'ah, I finish reviewing Surah Al-Baqarah, but I've been reading Surah Al Imran as new lesson, and now I have reached five pages in Surah Al Imran. So I'm going to do these five pages, and then I'm done with all of the muraja'ah. Then I'm going to go back again and do the whole circle again. Keep circulating from the beginning, going all the way to the spot you are in. That's the muraja'ah on a daily basis, and that is something that you do on your own. The muraja'a on your own, daily, because you have already memorized it, know how to read it, you have it in your head. You just need time to sit, and the best time is after Fajr. But everybody's time is different. Some people uh, have to work early in the morning. So if you have time after Fajr, sit in the masjid for 15 to 20 minutes, and do your muraja'a for five pages on a daily basis. This way you keep the Qur'an with you all the time. Because the Qur'an, if you not making the muraja'a, you will forget it. Even the imams, the big sheikhs, the imams in Al-Haram Al-Makki, Al-Haram al al sharif in Masr, anywhere in the world, they are doing muraja'ah on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Some of them do five ajza' a day. So this way they keep it with them all the time. Whenever they open the mushaf, whenever you give them an ayah, 
You can throw an ayah from anywhere in the Mus'haf. They can read it because they already have it with them. They are reviewing it. They are keeping it with them. So you can't say, I'm going to memorize it and then I'm done. No, you're not done. You're not going to be done with the Qur'an until you pass away. You cannot master the Qur'an. Okay, the Qur'an masters you. So you're always going to keep working with the Qur'an. You're always going to keep memorizing. You're always going to keep um, uh, reading the Qur'an until you die. And memorizing the Qur'an and reading it, we know is a great blessing. Blessings, and it's, and it's the greatest type of dhikr. Any type of dhikr you may do, the Qur'an is on top of that. So if you're given uh, 20 minutes of your time, 15 minutes of your time every single day after Salatul Fajr to read the Qur'an, making the muraja, that's a great thing. And you're going to see it in your book in the hereafter, in the day of resurrection. So that's very important to keep in mind. What we do in here is tahsinu tilawa. But to memorize the Qur'an, you have to work with your local uh, tahfil, local imam you have that has a uh, tahfil uh, memorization program. You enroll in that um, uh, class and you keep going on a daily basis. Most of the tahfil they do maybe five days a week or four days a week. But you have to be serious about it. And no matter what type of method ya ikhwan, you follow, you're going to finish the Qur'an if you are serious. A lot of people come to me and ask me a question, Muhammad Musa, uh, I like uh, the way you read in the Qur'an. I want to memorize the Qur'an. How did you do it? It doesn't matter how I did it. I was serious about it when I did it. And you have to be serious about it. And you will do it. Believe me. You just have to be serious about it. That's a goal for me and I have to do it. I want to memorize the Qur'an. Okay, keep that goal in you and work on that every single day. You will make it. How many years is that going to take me? Is going to vary depending on your hard work. How you are working. Are you lazy? You work five days and then you miss a month or two months. And that what happens to a lot of people. They are um, excited. They want to do it. They're very good for the first five days or for the first week. Or maybe for the first month. And after that, they're not uh, serious about it. So they're not going to make it. So no matter what type of method you follow in terms of memorizing the Qur'an, as long as you have the niyyah inside you, as long as you really want to do it, as long as you understand this is a need for me, as long as you want to do it, you will do it. As long as you understand the importance of the Qur'an, because a lot of people do not know the, the importance of the Qur'an. Some people belittle memorizing the Qur'an. Some people say, oh, I don't have to memorize all of the Qur'an. As long as I know ayatul ahkam, that's enough for me so I can be a good student of knowledge. But here's the thing, you don't know the Qur'an, you are nothing. When you read the stories and uh, the, 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 the manhaj of a salaf al-salih in terms of learning the knowledge of Islam, they start first with the Qur'an. Not the salaf, go to the sahaba, how they learn the religion. By learning the Qur'an. Ten ayat, the Prophet Muhammad teaches the, teach them. Ten ayat, they learn it, they know the ahkam, they know the meaning and everything, they, they take another ten ayat. That's how the light of this religion come to us. So the Qur'an is the main source. Regardless of what type of field of the Islamic knowledge you want to specialize, you have to know the Qur'an. It's important to learn how to memorize the Qur'an. It's important to have the Qur'an with you all the time. Okay, so do not belittle that. Don't think it's something, uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's worthless. No, that's the main knowledge. That's the main source of the deen. You know the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. And subhanAllah, when we say the Qur'an, Wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayruhu, hifdhul Qur'an. Memorizing the Qur'an makes anything else easy for you. If you are good in the tajweed, good in the hifth, good in terms of dealing with the Qur'an, Wallahi al-Azim, other knowledge will be very easy for you. And I'm talking personally. I see that. All of the other subjects in school, Wallahi, I easy uh, <clears throat> deal with them. I easy get an A. Simple and easy because of the blessings of the Qur'an. I finished the Qur'an when I was 14. And that helped me, even English, subhanAllah. A lot of people come to me and say, Muhammad Musa, uh, how long have you been in America? Have you been in America for 20 years? No, I'm just here for five years. But how do you speak like this? I said, that's the blessings of the Quran, the Tajweed. Because the Tajweed teaches you how to have a very flexible tongue, how to pronounce the Kha, how to make the Mad, how to make the Tafkheem. When you know all of this, your tongue is flexible. So when you learn in any language, if you pay attention to the way that people are speaking, you can speak like them. You already have the flexible tongue. You have the blessed tongue by the Qur'an. So this way, bi'ithnillah, you can easily do a lot of things. So for me, when people come to me sometimes, they say, oh, we cannot speak English. They've been in America for a very long time. I said, no. How you cannot learn English and you have already memorized the Qur'an? 
That's not right. If you have the Quran, you have a flexible tongue. Believe me, you can learn any language and you can learn any knowledge. Any field of knowledge be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. So it is important to know that memorizing the Quran is something that we have to take serious and something that we have to plan. We have to have it in our goals and work for it. And we ha we don't have to stop until we achieve it. How many years is going to take? It depends on your work. For me, I started when I was uh, 11. I finished when I was 14. Three years. Some people did it in less time. Some people did it in more time. So it depends on hard, how hard you will be working on it. Okay, I'm here to help you, inshallah, to do my best to share with you whatever I know, whatever that can help you and support you, inshallah, to achieve this and to be good reciters. Uh, and also, inshallah, <clears throat> one of the things that I'm going to be working with you through these online classes is to teach you how to have a beautiful recitation. Yeah, that's important. We have many, 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 many people that are, um, uh, they, 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 they read the Quran, they know how to read it, the tajweed is very good, the pronunciation is clear, whenever you hear it, you like it, but the problem, they don't have a good tone, when they read it, the recitation is not beautiful, how to make your voice beautiful, we're going to work on that, inshallah, together, you can do it, don't say that the beautiful voice is only for certain people. That's not true. Wallahi al-Azim. Anybody can have. Anybody is unique. You have your unique voice. You can make it beautiful. You just have to work on that. When I started learning the Quran, I wasn't reciting the same way I'm reciting now. I was having just a regular recitation. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. It's beautiful in terms of the tajweed, but there's no tone. It's not beautiful. When people pray behind you, they will not be uh, crying. You have to add a tone. You have to work on that. So, that recitation you heard in this one is different. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawmiddin. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين. All of that are different tones of the Quran. Different voices. You have to work on that, and you're gonna reach a point that you can control your voice. What type of recitation you wanna do? You wanna have a very قراءة uh, حزينة, a sad uh, tone that will make people cry. And you have to pick the way you want to recite depending on the meaning of the ayat. You're talking about al-jannah and al-nar. You want to make people cry. So you want to choose and pick a way that will make the recitation emotional. Will make the Quran touches the heart of people. That quality is really important to have it um, in your recitation. Many people recite the Quran, but not all of them are able to uh, make a change in people's heart. Those who are praying behind them or those who are listening to them. So inshallah, we will be working also on that. How to have a good recitation, how to have a very beautiful voice, and how to, uh, how, because most of the time people, they just don't trust themselves. They think they, they can't, but you can. Everybody can do it. It's easy. You just have to keep practicing, keep working on it, and you will you, you will have it, bi'ithnillah. Okay? So the class, inshallah, we're going to be talking about a lot of things. The recitation, ahkam al-tajweed, how to make your voice uh, beautiful, how to make people uh, enjoy your recitation, and how to make people, uh, inshallah, cry when they hear your recitation. Today, as I said, we're going to do Surah Al-Fatiha, and then the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah. And those who are connected, inshallah, uh, with me through the app called Zoom, they will be able for today to participate. If you want to participate, not a problem. Send me a private message uh, in the page, the, the Facebook page. Um, send me a message. Assalamu alaikum. I want to participate in the class and then I'm going to give you the instructions how to participate. It is free of charge. You're not going to be charged anything. You'll be able to participate for free. Just make dua for me and that's all I need from you. Okay? Just send me a message and then I will give you the instructions and you will be part of this class next week, Sunday, inshallah. The time for the class, uh, I wanted to do it at 2.30 but it's a little late uh, in, in, in Middle East. Because we have people who want to participate from Middle East, it's like 
uh, at night. So we want to move it a little back. So inshallah, starting next week, we will start at 2 p.m. U.S. time, which is 9 p.m. Mecca time. Okay? 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern time, which is 9 p.m. Uh, Mecca time, bi'ithnillah. Inshallah. So next week, we're going to be uh, live for the class 2, uh, 2 p.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern time and 9 p.m. Uh, Mecca time, bi'ithn al-Mawla. Azza wa Jal. Someone says, what day? It's just on Sunday. It's one day. It's on Sunday. The online version of this class is on Sunday. We have the physical class in the Masjid, Masjid al-Furqan in Philadelphia. We have that on Monday and Thursday after Maghrib, between Maghrib and Isha, Monday and Thursday. That's the physical one. You have to be here at the Masjid. So if you are away from Philadelphia, you're not going to be able to participate in, in, in the physical class. But if you are anywhere in the world, you can join the Sunday class. Okay? At 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is 9 p.m. Mecca time. And that's for anybody, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's, it's not limited. The physical one is only brothers. It's only brothers. The, um, yeah, women and men. That's what I just said. Um Saleh is asking. If, yes, anybody can participate. Sisters and brothers. Okay? Not a problem. It's an online class. And uh, no no restrictions. Okay? Okay? All right, so now we're going to start reading Surah Al-Fatiha and then go into the next page, uh, the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah. For those who are connected uh, to me through Zoom, uh, we have Irfan. Irfan, are you with me? Uh, you okay. You can start reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Okay. <clears throat> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم When you say الحمد لله When you say الحمد لله Don't say الحمد لله رب العالمين No الحمد لله رب العالمين Keep the tone straight. Don't change the level of the tone. Do not say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. No. Keep it straight forward. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. No, no. Try to relax. What I'm, I'm not saying to shorten the met. I'm not saying to say alameen quickly, no. Keep them in, them in long for four harakat. But what I want you to do throughout the the, 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 the whole four harakat, the four counts of them, in, keep the level of the tone the same. Don't change it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Don't say alameen. And notice? You yes. go a little up. Keep it the same level. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Excellent Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Can you read غير المغضوب عليهم again? I'm sorry. Can you read غير المغضوب عليهم again? غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. This is مد اللازم. Madulazim, uh, you have to do six harakat, six counts. Okay? Walabdolin. When we say madulazim, we have many different types of the mad. We have al madul muttasil, we have al madul munfasil, okay? And we have al madul aridul sukun. We have Maddulin, all of these tabs of Mad are 
uh, a part of ahkam al tajweed, the rules of the tajweed, and they have different types uh, of pronunciation. So now I'm only talking about al maddul lazim. Okay? Uh, I'm okay. going to give you a very simple, basic idea how to identify al maddul lazim. Okay? Whenever you see alif with the alama of the mad, you know alama al mad, well, over the alif you have alama al mad, right? Uh -huh. But notice after the alif, you have the lamb. The lamb has shadda on it. Do you know the shadda? Yes. Okay, so whenever you see the alif with alamatul mad followed by any letter that has shadda, so that's maddul lazim. You have to do six counts, six harakat. I'm going to give you an, another example of that. Al haqqa, surah al haqqa. Al haqqa, alif after the ha. Are you with me? Al ha. Yeah. Okay, after the alif, what comes next? Qaf, right? Mm -hmm. The qaf has shadda on it, right? Okay. So that shadda makes the mad maddul lazim, and you have to do six counts. Gotcha. So a question to you now, whenever you see al maddul lazim, are you going to be able to identify it? Yes, yeah, so right. anytime uh, there is a alif uh, with the mud on it and follows by any letter with the shadda on it, it's going to be a mud lazim. Mud lazim. How many counts? Six. Sitta harakat. Barakallah fi. Al maddul lazim has different times. There is kalimi, harfi, there is muthaqqal, and muhaffaf. I don't want to talk about that now. Okay? okay. I'm just giving you a general idea. Okay? Gotcha. So whenever Oops. you, and this is most, uh, this is. Uh, this type of maddul lazim is the, 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 the more type that you're going to be seeing in the Quran. Okay? So whenever you have al alif with alamatul mad on it, followed by any letter with the shadda, so that's al maddul lazim. So, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Okay. Now, the ya with the four harakat, what is that called? That's Maddul Arid al Sukun. I will talk about it later, inshallah. Not now. Let's okay. just focus on the Maddul Al Lazim, okay? Ghayr al Maghdub Alayhim Wal Dalleen. Okay. You want me to recite it? Yeah, say it again. <coughs> غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. It's not six counts. Do you know how 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 do you count the harakat of the mid? It's like opening your finger or closing your finger. So let's say you have your both, uh, you have your right hand with your fingers closed. Okay. All right. Are you watching the online uh, uh, Facebook video or are you just hearing me? No, uh, I'm, uh, I can just hear you. Okay, so now I have my right hand with closed fingers. All of okay. my fingers are closed. Just like in, in the position if you want to punch someone. Uh -huh. Okay, so how do I count? I open one finger, that's one count. When I open the second finger, that's another count. Okay, so when I say sit harakat, I want to have six counts opening my opening six fingers so okay. that's six harakat okay uh-huh mashallah excellent can you read the first page of surah al-baqarah alif la mim you have the mushaf with you yeah sure uh-huh <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> ألف لام okay, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومن <laughs> the 
the way you are pronouncing the gunna is a uh -huh. little weird. So I want you to say it. Wama unzila. Wama unzila. Wama unzila min qablika wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun. You say it min qablika. Mm -hmm. The right way to say it is min qablika. What is the difference? The second way is that you apply the qalqala. Notice mm -hmm. when you say min qablika, min qablika, you see the difference? Qab, b, b. You see mm -hmm. that? So that's yeah. called qalqala. What is a qalqala? It's a half of a fatha. You're not saying qaba, qaba, that's a fatha, right? You know the fatha? Mm -hmm. You are doing half of a fatha. You're not doing sukun, you're not doing fatha. You're doing something in between. Qab. Notice? Qab. So that's uh, min qablika. That's the qalqala. We have five letters that whenever we have them in the middle with the sukun, we have to make the qalqala on them. And also whenever we stop on them in two situations. Situation number one, when we have them in the middle with the sukun, like the ba'in qab. Notice it has sukun on it. You have the mushaf in front of you. Mm -hmm. Right, and also those who are watching, you 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 can follow with us. You can open the first page of Surah Al Baqarah and follow with us. I'm commenting on certain mistakes that he's making, so you can benefit from it and learn the rules. So you can have the Mus'haf open and following with us in this way. Inshallah, you can learn. So what I'm talking about is the Qalqal. We have five letters, and they come in two words: Qutubu Jad. Okay, Qutubu Jad. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see um, what I'm talking about. Okay, let me share it. Share screen. Share. Do you see my screen now? Uh, it's loading right now. Yeah, I can see it now. Okay. Let me make the font bigger so you can. So, you see that clear? Yes. These five letters, Qaf, Ta, I'm sorry for those who are, okay, the sound is very low. I'm sorry for those who are watching online, they're not going to be able to see my, uh, uh, my, my screen. But those who are connected to me online, they will see it. So these five letters, Qaf, Ta, Ba, Jim, Dad, you can put that in your notes. Qaf, Ta, Ba, Jim, Dal. Whenever you have any one of them in two situations, whenever you have one of the huruf al qalqala in one of the two situations, situation number one, you have one of these letters in the middle of the word with the sukun. So then you have to do qalqala. Like min qablika, qablika. Okay? Situation number two, when you stop on them, regardless of what type of harakah they have, they have sukun, they have dhamma, they have kasra, they have fatha, it doesn't matter. As long as they are at the end of the word and you stop in on them, you have to apply the qalqala. An example, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَ Notice, I'm not saying ahad. I'm not making sukun, I'm making qalqala. أَحَد It has dhamma on it. Dhamma, tanween. أَحَدُونِ اللَّهُ If I continue, I'm going to say أَحَدُونِ اللَّهُ But because I'm stopping, I'm going to make the qalqala. So these five letters, قَاف, طَاء, باء, جيم, دال, any one of them that comes in the middle of the word with the sukun. If it's in the middle of the word with fatha, dhamma, kasra, no, that's not what we are talking about. So no qalqala. They're in the middle with the sukun. So there's qalqala. That's situation number one. Situation number two. When you stop on them, whenever you stop on them, you have to make the qalqala. So here I want you to say, وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِن قَبَلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِن قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ MashaAllah. Okay, Brother Saeed Al-Alawi is saying you want to join the class. InshaAllah, I will send you a text. I will send you a message, inshaAllah, with the instructions. And inshaAllah, you're going to be a part of the class next week, inshaAllah. Uh -huh, continue. <coughs> uh, next, next verse? Yeah, next, uh, yes. 
أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المصلحون ما شاء الله excellent بارك الله فيك Brother Irfan, your recitation is very beautiful. The ahkam is, is beautiful. Uh, Insha'Allah, we're going to be working on more. Because the way I'm fixing the recitation, I'm not going to give you everything in one shot. You're not going to understand it. Now we're working on ghunna, qalqala, mad. Once you are, okay, you are very, um, you, once you, can you mute your microphone, please? Once you master that, bi'ithnillah, then after that, we're going to be working on other things. Mad, tafkhim, uh, tarqiq. Uh, uh, in other part of so of uh, other parts of the ahkam al tajweed al waqf wal ibtida in a lot of things that are a little advanced. So mashallah, you're doing well, and also you have a very good tone. Okay, your recitation, the 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 the, the, the recitation is beautiful. Your sound is beautiful, but we're gonna work inshallah in the upcoming classes more in the way that to make the recitation sounds more beautiful and people will like it and they will enjoy it. And they will be, uh, inshallah, crying when you lead them in the salat. Bismillah. Thank you very much. We're gonna take the next. Barakallah, big brother. The next person. Let me open. Okay. Arom, are you ready? Okay, go ahead. Al Fatiha and then the first page of Surah Al Baqarah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله فرس. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين no, الحمد لله no, 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 we, we are doing the same thing so for this class, Surah Al-Fatiha, in the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah. Next class, we're going to do the second page. So we all will be working on one page. Okay? So I cannot hear you properly. Do you hear me now? So I said today we are doing Surah Al-Fatiha in the, Surah Al uh, the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah. Do you hear me now? Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين You went a lot of, you went you went a lot of fast on the shadda in الدين you said مالك يوم الدين no relax مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين دعين the sukoon is not strong enough to be a correct sukoon your sukoon is a little loose you're saying إياك نعبد no إياك نعبد it has to be a solid sukun إياك نعبد don't say نعبد notice yours is loose and when I want it to be very solid and strong إياك نعبد إياك نعبد Everybody who's watching, you can you you can follow with us, inshallah. You can open the mushaf. Surah al fatiha I don't have to open the mushaf because you know it by heart. But when we um uh, go to the first page of Surah al baqarah you can open and follow along with us and listen to the comment that I'm making on the recitation. You can learn from that. Uh, so what I was talking about that the the ain the sukun. Most of the time, people have a loose sukun. They have a loose sukun. The sukun is not. Uh, strong enough to be a correct sukun. It has to be solid. Don't say na'budu. No. Iyaka na'budu. Okay? So very important. Whenever you have a sukun on any letter, that sukun to be solid and to be uh, to be to, to, to be a correct sukun. When it's loose, so it's kind of going to the fatha or to the dhamma or to the kasa. Na'a. It's like fatha. It's like you say na'a. Notice? So that's not sukun. 
You want to keep it very strong and solid. Iyaka na'budu, na'budu. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. No, say nasta'in, nasta'in. The kasra has to be a clear kasra. Do say nasta'in, nasta'in. Notice, nasta'in. نستعين. <تصفيق> 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 This is not. This is not. This is. This is not a good way to make your wakf, because your stopping was not, you know, uh, was not beautiful. Don't say غير صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم. No, if that is too long for you to read as one ayah, you can um, split the ayah to two uh, parts. You can say. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم Okay, and then you say غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Okay, and if you have a, a long uh, breath, you can do the whole ayah uh, by itself. But if you want to do it, you have to do it all together. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. But it's better for you split it. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم then غير المغضوب. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Okay, say say that again. غير المغضوب. Say say it again. غير المغضوب. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Your pronunciation of the dot is incorrect. You pronounce it, you kind of mix in rain with dot. You say, no, it's dot, no rain. Don't say, you put in a rain in between the lamb and the dot, which is not right. Lamb, then you jump to the dot. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Is this a ضاد or a زاد? It's a ضاد, not زاد. A lot of people in many many countries, uh, they pronounce a ضاد as a ضاء, which is incorrect. Do you see my screen? You see my screen, right? Yeah. So this is Bad. All right? And this is Va. Va. What is the difference between the Bad and the Va? When you say Bad, the tongue stays inside your mouth. Va. Your tongue has to be out. Notice. Of, of, notice my tongue is out of my mouth. Va, va, but va is inside. So there are two distinct, different letters. But a lot of times people misunderstand, thinking that the lot is the lot and the lot is the lot. But that's not right. Lot is lot. The tongue is inside. All of the tongue does not is not supposed to come out. Va, the tip of your tongue has to come out. It has to pass your teeth. Va, va, va. So what we have in Surah Al-Fatiha is Allah. Your tongue has to stay inside. Do not bring it out. 
Hello? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sirat wa al-ladheena an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa la'udhaleen What you are doing is that you add an ighain between the lam and the dad. You say wa la'udha wa la'udha No, no ghayn. It's just dad. غير المغضوب عليهم لسن ولض 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 أها ولد ضالين excellent say that again غير المغضوب عليهم ولض no now do you see the difference yeah excellent okay go to the first page of surah al-baqarah <clears throat> There is a runna. There is there is a runna that you missed. After the mud of the lab, there is a runna. Idram bi runna. Alif lam mim. Notice lam. Okay, two meds with six harakat, six counts, and in between them there is a gunna. The gunna two counts, two harakat. So, alif lam mim. Alif lam mim. Excellent. Don't say fih. It is ha, not ha. Don't say fih. No, fih. Ha. Like H in English when you say habit. Ha, ha. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. Yeah, I don't want you to go fast. I just want you to pronounce the how correctly. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. أها. هدى للمتقين. أها. الذين يؤمنون ب الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك MashaAllah, excellent. Very beautiful recitation. And your tone is very beautiful. And then, inshallah, in the next class, or next classes, we will be working on more uh of tajweed and some advices for the recitation how to make it more beautiful inshallah thank you for participating inshallah now please mute your microphone 
Now I'm gonna recite the same thing that uh, uh, the students did so you can hear the proper pronunciation and how to read them. So, A'udhu Billahi min shaytan rajim Notice that I'm raising my voice. This is one of the things that will make you have a beautiful recitation. You have to trust yourself and you make the recitation come from your heart. A'udhu Billahi min shaytan No, say A'udhu Billahi min No, raise your voice. That helps you. It gives you the trust. and gives you <coughs> the strength. And gives you the, the, the power, insha'Allah, to do the, the, the recitation correctly. So, raise your voice. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Arrahmanir rahim malik yawmiddin. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين In notice, whenever you are pronouncing the mad you want to control it in two ways. Number one, to make sure that the counts of the med are correct. Here we have six harakat. And also if you want to add some uh, beautiful tones to the recitation, you can do that in the med. So notice, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا you can also say غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ You don't have, you're not necessarily to say it the way I'm saying it because everybody has a different, unique sound. And when you listen to different mashayikh, you notice that. They say it differently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you that. You have it naturally on you. You just have to work on it. Whenever you have mud, you try to make the tone different or to add some things that will make the mud more beautiful. صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ I don't want to go too deep into the maqamat, which is one of the things that a lot of Qurra do. But these maqamat, the knowledge of the maqamat is taken from music. So we don't want to we, we don't want to dig too much into that. I don't want to talk about it. But anyway, we have different uh, sounds based on the maqam, based on um, the, the, the way of recitation. How to say that in English. The maqam is just the way of your, your recite. Everybody who recites the Quran has a certain maqam that he is reciting on. That could be, that's his natural voice, or because of his surroundings. People in his country, this is how they read. So he got affected, and he's reading in that specific maqam, or that specific tone. Okay? Whatever tone you are using, you can, inshallah, beautify the recitation. Okay? When you listen to different mashayikh, you notice they read in, in different styles, different ways, because they have different maqamat. Some of these mashayikh, they know... The, these maqamat and some of them do not know it but they are able to read with it because it's natural it's in you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in you so, subhanallah a lot of mashaykh they don't know but they, they, they can change the voice they don't know what type of maqam is it they cannot name it but they are able to have different ways different styles of reading um, the, the, um, the ayat so whatever maqam you are reading will just make sure that you are comfortable just make sure that you are confident. And inshallah, your recitation is beautiful. Even if it's not beautiful, it's going to get beautiful. Don't feel shy. Some people feel shy saying, no, I don't have a beautiful sound. I don't want to, you know, try to, uh, you know, beautify the recitation. It may sound terrible. Maybe it's going to sound terrible for the first, second, third time. But it's not going to stay terrible for the whole life. It's going to change. But isn't it as going to change? So do your best. And also one of the uh, the very good ways to do that is to listen to the mashayikh that has beautiful sounds. 
Listen to Mishar Al-Ifasi. Listen to Sheikh Al-Sudais, Sheikh Al-Mishawi, Sheikh Abdul Basid, Abdul Samad. And many, many of the Qurra. As you listen to them, try to read as they are reading. You can start with that. Let's say I like Sheikh Mishar Al-Ifasi. I'm going to read. I'm going to listen to him a lot and, 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 and copy the way he's reading. Do that. Not a problem. But at one point, you're going to reach... A level that you can control the, the, the tone. You can control the, 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 the way you're reciting. So you want to have your own unique recitation. Okay? But you can start with uh, imitating one of the mashayikh. Not a problem. But make sure that the recitation is beautiful. People like it. People enjoy it. People, it affects people. It touches people's heart. That's, that's the, the, the point of recitation. When the Imam is reading, there is no any beauty in the recitation. You just want the Salat to finish. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Imani. You just want the Salat to finish. No. You want to read in an effective way that will make people cry behind you. Where people enjoy the Salat. People would think of the Ayat. People will focus. Because a lot of times, people are not with you in the Salat. But if you have a beautiful sound, you're forcing them to stay inside the Masjid and to have their brain with you. And they pay attention to the recitation. Okay? So, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لا ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب وي... الذين ي... Notice you feel in the ayat because you're talking about the mu'mini describing them who are they الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Notice أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ I'm raising my voice. I'm talking about their destiny in the hereafter. أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ They are guided. They are upon the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And they will be successful in the hereafter. You're talking about their destiny. What's going to happen to them? That what that they will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you want to raise your voice so that the person who is listening to you will pay more attention. Because you're telling him that's what's going to happen when you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you believe in Ad-Dar al in the hereafter. The guidance in the falah, the happiness and the success will be with you, bi-ithnillah, and the self in the hereafter. أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Okay, so I said that trust yourself, have Self-confidence, very important, have self-confidence. You may not be able to do it correctly today, you'll do it tomorrow. It may not sound beautiful today, it's not going to remain the same, it's going to change, it's going to be beautiful. Okay, you may think it's not beautiful, but let people tell you if it's beautiful or not beautiful. Always do not judge yourself, maybe you have a good recitation, you don't know. Because you don't have self-confidence, you must have it, raise your voice. Try to have the tone in the recitation. Okay? And then listen to the mashayikh who have very beautiful recitation and you can learn from them. Listen to the way they are making them. And pay attention to the way that the tone changed. The sheikh is reading and then he goes up. 
And sometimes he goes down. All of that for meaning. He wants you to pay attention to the, uh, <clears throat> to the things that are in the ayat. So that's the recitation. How the recitation becomes beautiful, effective, and people enjoy it, and people uh, touches people's heart. And this way, people, inshallah, will be guided with such beautiful and good recitation. So, inshallah, this is all what we have for today. As I said in the beginning of the class, anybody can participate. What do you need to do? Send me a message that you want to participate in this online uh, Quran class. And then, inshallah, I will send you the instructions and you will be a part of the class, uh, inshallah, next week. Anyone can participate, brother, brothers and sisters. It's an online class. So, it's open for everybody. Just make sure that you send me a message and then I will give you the instructions and you will be a part of this class. And seriousness is the flag of this class. You're not serious, missing classes, you will be out. Two missing classes, I will tell you, I'm sorry, I'm going to give the spot to someone else. So you have to be serious. And as I said in the beginning, uh, the prerequisite for this class is that at least to know how to read the Quran. You can open the Mus'haf and read. If you have that, so inshallah you're ready to join the class. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to share the video. You know, many other people, inshallah, maybe want to participate. Maybe you don't have the time to do that. But inshallah, if you share the video and other people participate, you'll get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any concerns, anything about the video, anything about the class, inshallah, put it in the comment. I have a very busy schedule, but inshallah, inshallah, I'm going to make sure that I answer all of the questions in the comments. So put your questions in the comments. You have a suggestion, you have anything, uh, the doors are open. Not a problem. Just put it in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. Inshallah. Jazakumullahu khayran jami'an for watching. Barakallahu fikum. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim wa barik wa an'am ala nabina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.